Hey, Indianapolis Motor Speedway fans, Doug Bowles here with you, standing on corner 14 of our road course just after the Verizon 200 finished here in 2023 for another episode of Behind the Bricks. We're already working to get ready in oval configuration for a test tomorrow. We thought you'd want to see how we convert the track from road course to oval. So we're actually standing out here that what would be pit in when we're in road course configuration. So inside oval turn one, and this is where the cars come out. So we have to get this concrete out of the way. There's about 48 of these barriers here inside turn one. There's six tons of piece, so 12,000 pounds to move these over and get them out of the way. And then eventually they're gonna go up to turn four to close the oval up for oval practice. We have 14 people out here today working on that led by our friend Scott Petrie here with this excavator. Scott, you, uh, you've you been out here. You're going to try and do this in about how long today? Oh, we're going to try to do it in six, less than six hours. So you've got about 14 people out here? Yes. And then you start here, and you've got a crew in turn two and in turn four. We've got a crew at uh, Sixth and Holman. We're removing uh, 34 barriers there. We've got to take the fence off of it, store the fence, take the large barriers, and put 10 at the end of pit road, and then we'll close up turn 10 onto the track. So there you go, folks. Scott does this. Scott also helped us build our dirt track. We use him for a lot of the things around here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Without he and his team, we don't get to go over testing tomorrow. Maybe the most precious commodity we have here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway is our asphalt. So even when we're making these moves, it's really important to protect it. So the weight of this excavator and that six ton piece of wall, we want to make sure as we put these feet down that we're doing everything we can to protect the asphalt. And this is one of the ways that we do that, especially when the asphalt gets hot in the summer. So I'm sitting here with Kyle Petrie in a truck with a six ton block of concrete behind us. We're going to take it from pit in from the road course and we're going to take it up to what is road course turn one or oval turn four so we can close that off. So Kyle, uh, is it going to feel kind of strange driving this with six tons behind me? Shouldn't. Well, I'll give, we'll give it a shot here. This is uh, really the first year for you guys doing this. Is that, How do you feel? Is it fun? Do you enjoy doing oh, it? Or? I love it. You know, I mean, what's better than getting to be out here every day? So, so we're out here right now and the sun's going down. Obviously, you're going to work into the dark because this is a six hour process. How much harder is it to do it in the night? How much do you need to get done before sunset to make sure that you're in good shape? You know, I really, I think we'll be okay. The hanging the fence is going to be the tricky part. So the fence panels actually fit in these concrete blocks? Yes. And then those are hard to hang because they're just hard to get them lined up and... Yeah, just exactly. It's hard to get lined up. The poles want to lean in or out and you just got to make sure everything's just right. I can definitely feel that's behind us. I can, yeah. I can feel that pulling us out. So uh, you get a chance to work out here. How fun is it to do what we're just about to do right now across the yard of bricks? It never gets old. No matter how many times you come down the front stretch with that view of the pagoda and across the yard of bricks, it puts butterflies in your stomach every single time. So I've always been told that find something you love and call it work. Absolutely. And this is kind of you and I both, right? Absolutely. Love this place, love the Yard of Bricks, Absolutely. and we get to call it work. Right. So Kyle Petrie and I just delivered the last six ton block of concrete that will close up Oval Turn 4. And you can see behind me, this was road course turn one today for the Verizon 200. But tomorrow, for the Oval Test, these blocks will make sure we're in oval configuration. So it's not just the walls and the fence that we have to move. The lines when we're in road course, the painted lines are different for the road course than the oval. So as you can see right here, we're in the process of getting rid of these lines so they have to spray paint them off. We'll bring some more water over here to make sure that all of this paint is off the surface, otherwise it'll dry. And up there in the distance, just a little bit, you can see the bright line that's already painted. So when they're in oval testing, they know where the oval pit in and pit out is, as well as the oval lines around the rest of the racetrack. So as we get ready for this oval test on the backside of the Verizon 200, we've already got the tire packs out here in oval turn one. This is road course turn 10. What happens here is you can't keep coming through the road course because of this tire pack. Now, when we go into full racing mode for the Indy 500, or if we go back to the oval for NASCAR, there'll actually be some of that wall that we've seen will be here and some fencing. A big enough hole right here just for rescue equipment to get out, and that would be putting us in full oval configuration. So we've given you an idea of what it takes. That takes about 15 hours. What we're doing tonight takes about six. But this is what we do every time we go from road course to oval. Hope you've enjoyed this little episode of Behind the Bricks and what it takes to take a two and a half mile oval, turn it into a little under a two and a half mile road course, or back again. The flexibility of this place, Carl Fisher's vision from 1909, pretty impressive.